Steve Kranz here, and I want to show you how to make these miniature chess pieces with a laser cutter. They're about three to five centimeters tall, and if you've got a laser cutter handy, they're actually pretty easy to make. Start with an acrylic bar, three eighths of an inch thick, or about nine millimeters. Next, draw the profile of the piece in a vector-based program. Now, you can have the profile make a complete circuit by cutting at the bottom, but I didn't bother with that because of the next step, which is to cut out a rectangle that surrounds the piece. The key is that the rectangle is as wide as the acrylic bar is thick. Now, remove everything within that rectangle and look at that. Pretty cool. We can start to see the form. The piece is surrounded by excess acrylic that I call padding. Lay the piece on its side and remove the padding from the top. We'll keep the bottom padding because it will help support the piece in the following steps. Now return the piece to the rectangle that we just cut out. So we've effectively rotated the piece 90 degrees. The left and right sides of the piece used to be the front and back sides. Using that same profile we drew, cut it again on the rotated piece. Pull the piece out again, remove the excess padding, and you've got a miniature pawn. You can make all six pieces the same way. The pawn, rook, and queen have the same profiles for both the front and side, but the bishop, king, and knight each have different front and side profiles. Real quick, we'll go through the process of making each piece. Starting with the pawn again, what you're looking at here is five views of the same piece, rotated from 0 to 45 to 90 degrees. Here's the second cut. The view from 0 and 90 degrees are the same because the front and side profiles are the same. Making the bishop is very similar, it's just a bit taller. The side profile has the iconic cut for the hat. Here's the first cut of the queen, and here's after the second. The king looks pretty similar. The cross on his head is cut differently between the front and the side. The rook is pretty straightforward. And lastly, the knight. The knight is definitely the most challenging to manufacture, but it is also the most distinctive. The king and the queen were my favorite pieces to design. I try to make the queen feminine with curves and a voluptuous bosom, while the king is more masculine and rigid with his straight edges. But my favorite feature is the subtle difference in their hats. The bottom of the king's hat goes straight down, while the queen's hat flares out. To me, I think of it as earrings on the queen. Here's a cool thing you can do. You can take the laser cutter's etching feature to give the pieces a frosted look. For example, you can etch windows on the rook to make it look more like a castle, or you can etch eyes, nostrils, ears, and a mane onto the knight. If you'd like to review this video in non-video form, check out the links to an Instructable and an Imager album in the description. So I first made these chess pieces and took all the photos about four years ago when I was in grad school, and I just now got around to making this video. Believe it or not, I have a tiny problem with procrastination. But here's the real problem though, I have another project from around the same time. I made this object that I call a Turner's Tetrahedron. It's based on something called a Turner's Cube. Google it and you'll get tons of results. While the tetrahedron might not look as cool as the cube, it was much harder to make, and that was the challenge. That's what drove me to make it. The actual machining on a CNC mill was simple. It's just cuts and pockets, but the work holding, that is, fixturing the part in place, was the real challenge. Anyway, I made the parts, took hundreds of photos, a bunch of videos, and have been about 95% of the way to finishing this project for the past three years. And I am still not done but I would love to finally finish it and move on. So if you would like to see me finish this project, I'll let me know, and if I get a few comments like, hey Steve, you should do that, it'll totally be worth your time. It might just give me the motivation I need to actually finish it. And lastly, uh, shameless plug here, I recently started a new job where I make YouTube videos about a new 3D printer. So click the link to check it out, and if you like 3D printing and you like the channel, please subscribe. And actually, lastly, you have sat through this entire video in its entirety. Congratulations and thank you for your attention. As a reward, here is a photo of a very silly cat named Hubert.